Hello internet goers and welcome to my third tutorial video. In this video I'm going to be finishing off this little kind of trilogy which I've been doing for Voxel Sniper. I actually that makes it sound way more epic than it is. But yeah, for now this is going to be my last episode on Voxel Sniper and I'm going to be covering two more useful brushes which can really help you when building. Now for most of the video I'm going to be focusing on the pull brush which is a bit more complex than the brushes I've done before. And then at the end I'll probably also throw in a little bit about the line brush. Okay, so like I said, starting off with the pull brush. Now, the first thing to note about the pull brush is that it's not undoable, which can mean that using this in the wrong way uh, could potentially lead to difficult to handle mistakes. Now, the reason I'm going to spend so much time talking about this particular brush is because there are so many ways you, uh, which you can affect the outcome of the brush. So, for example, all of these here, these shapes, uh, have been created using um, exactly the same size and height brush. With this brush, you can both choose the height using slash VH and then the height you want. I've gone with 5. Uh, and you can change the size by using slash B and then the size. So like I was saying, each of these is made with the same size and height. The difference is how much pinch and bubble they have. So the way this brush works is you access the pull brush by using slash B pull. And then what you do is you put in a pair of numbers. Now, each of these numbers can be anything between 0, 0, 0 0.0 and 1.0. And as I said, there's two numbers. So the first, if you put in 0, 0.0 and 0, 0.0, the first number is the pinch factor of the brush. And basically what it does is it pinches stuff in, as you can see, in the second shape here. Now what the other one does, the second number, is it's the bubble factor. What that does is it basically kind of, like it sounds, bubbles the shape out. Uh, so then you get a shape more similar to this. So if we just quickly go over to how to get each of these shapes, uh, for the first one, I've used slash B, pull, and then 0 0.0, 0, 0.0. For this shape, I have both values at zero. And when I click, I get that particular shape. And that is, as I said, using that height and size. Now for the second one, which is more pinched, I use slash B pull uh, 1.0, 0, 0, 0.0. So the pinch factor is at 1, and the bubble factor is at 0. And then, as you can see, I will get a more pointy shape. Now for the third one, I use slash 0, 0.0, 1.0, which will give me the bubble shape. And finally, for the last one, I use slash 1.0, 1.0. So there you have it. That is kind of the basics of this brush. Now, I'm not going to leave it there quite yet. Uh, I'm actually going to show you kind of what you can do with this brush. So what makes this brush so useful is that it's it stacks onto uh, the terrain under it in a very unique way. For example, if I go back to the slash B pull 0, 0 with 0 values and click here, you'll see that it'll stack on to the previous shape uh, in this way. Now basically what it's doing is it's putting the this shape which I had uh, originally on top of the other one. So if I click down here it'll just put that with the same radius and height but it will put the blocks on top of the other blocks. So this obviously makes it very easy to create uh, mountainous terrain very quickly with the obvious disadvantage being that you cannot undo this if you do anything wrong. As well as that, it does require a lot of practice to kind of get the shapes you want, especially when it comes to what bubble and pinch factors you're going to use. Now, for example, if I if I raise the, the pinch to uh, 0.5, for example, and have the other one at 0.2, now this is still, this is going to be, make everything pointier. Now, I still have it the same, as you can see, Okay, so those numbers gave me a very odd outcome, which I wasn't aware of. Ah, of course, I see the problem. See, the problem is I have I have values here which are above zero, uh, which causes some problems. If I go to what I was planning to do, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, it will be slightly more vertical, uh, more, more pinched together. If I up this even higher to, say, 8, then uh, you can see... When I click around, 
it's kind of still the, the sloping thing where this is the, the curve around the side. And to be honest, while I know what I'm talking about, this might not make very much sense to you, but it, it does require a lot of kind of fiddling around with, and uh, as I said, a lot of practice to get, get it how you want. But anyway, what I usually use a lot for uh, very kind of spiky things is I can change the height. Now if I go with 8, for example, the, the thing is the higher the height is in relation to the size, that is the uh, radius, the more pointy the outcome will be. For example, these have the same size, the same radius, but they have different heights, and as you can see, this this shape here looks much pointier because of this. And so that's how the voxel height can really affect it. The opposite goes for when you want to use bubbles. If you lower the voxel height to lower than the size, then it will end up looking more flat. But yeah, I've tried to go over the uh, pull brush as best I can. I know this seems quite chaotic, but I've tried to explain it in a, a simple way which I hope most people will be able to understand if they have some kind of uh, experience with the plugin. And as I said, I'm going to throw in one last little brush as well now here at the end of this episode. I'm done with the pull brush, but I will also tell you, as I said, about the line brush, which is a very, very simple brush. Uh, the way it works is you do slash BL, uh, and what happens is the arrow becomes the, uh, the selector for point 1, and with the gunpowder you select point 2, and it creates a line between them. Now this can be very useful for many things, for example making the framework for a structure which you want to be at an odd angle, and it's difficult for you to kind of calculate uh, the, the line you'll need to create this framework. Now the only thing you want to be, you, the only thing you can really change with this brush is the block which it makes the line out of. So if I go for, for example, wool by using V wool, and click at this point, and then at this point here, you can see it will become a completely straight line between those two points. Now if I instead go for maybe making a line between here and uh, I don't know, there, as you can see, it tries to make the line between those to those two points as well. And this is about as straight as any line is going to be between these two points. And if I, if I want to build maybe a bridge up to here, uh, then this line brush will help me do that. And so yeah, that's really all I had to show for this episode. And this is the kind of mess I can make, just throwing blocks around all over the place. So uh, that was this week's tutorial. I hope you liked it. I also want to say very sorry that this is coming out late. I had some trouble getting it out on time this week just because uh, I've been sick and there are a couple other reasons as well. But in any case, I hope you learned something from this video and I hope you enjoyed it. That's all from me for now and I'll see you guys next time.